County Cavan and Far Fermanagh. On the map, a filigree pattern of lake and water meadow hooked on at the west to the lonely Quilkia Mountains. Memories of marchings and manoeuvres of own row and the tragic end to his story. And in relation to the present day, the Robinson brothers at Milltown near Belturbet and the delicate art or craft they practice. The word filigree is as apt as any other. The three brothers are Charles, Michael and Tom Joe. And with them their cousin Ignatius Foster, an apprentice to, or you might more readily say, student of the craft of marquetry. It takes a man five to seven years to learn the skills that go to the making of traditional or classical furniture. The Robinsons are craftsmen who don't waste much time on idle talk. They go at their work with a quiet determination that still does not conceal their respect and love for the raw material they use. It all begins here with planks of rare and valuable wood. Mahogany, as Charles Robinson says, from the New World. What they will do as we watch them is to make a suite of dining room furniture the side they've accepted, in a style that we associate with the grandeur of the period of the late King's George, the Regency. The brothers, you might say, give constant thought to their chosen, even hereditary craft. Cycling home one evening, Michael struck on an idea for turning all the chair backs together, doing several in one skillful move. And like a devoted musician who has discovered a new melody, he couldn't even wait until the next morning to test and try it out. The wood is polished with a handful of shavings. This working in wood calls for patience and practice. And there's a lot more than that to it when it comes to these high levels of craftsmanship. For the expert knows that no two trees, even of the same species, are ever identical. That the life story of a tree, happiness and unhappiness you might say, are written in its substance. With hand and dividers the carving is measured on the chair back and carefully drawn in. James Robinson, the great-grandfather and his son William of Drumgoon House near Kilishandra, went in for coopering in a big way. Four journeymen coopers and five of themselves constantly at work. The Robinsons remember their father steeping hazel rods in the brook for hoops or bands for the butter firkins, to get the product from the farms to the butter markets, then to be found in every town. But about the beginning of the century, round about the time when the Kilishandra Creamery was established and the cooperative movement underway, the firkin and the coopering began to disappear and the old style butter market. back to the lid. This time Michael is turning the centre pillar of the tripod leg which will support the table.
and a final check before sanding. When Charles Robinson here walks down the stairs carrying these sheets of mahogany and sycamore veneer, he knows that he is carrying material that has been tried and tested. He must make a veneer sandwich of alternate layers of pale and dark wood, cutting them up in pairs until he has a total of 12. The dictionary tells us that a veneer is a thin layer of wood, ivory tortoise shell with a decorative or fine finish that is bonded to the surface of a less expensive material, usually wood. Animal or scotch glue is used to stick the layers of veneer together. In the mid-1940s, Charles left school and apprenticed in a local furniture factory in Bell Turbot, which later closed. He speaks highly of Ernie Cregan, who worked there, a skilled cabinet maker who had learned his craft in Dublin. Ignatius Foster brings the hot coals of plywood, blocks that are clamped together on each side of the veneer sandwich. A sheet of newspaper prevents the glue from sticking to the coals. They are firmly clamped together at each end and will be left for at least 12 hours to set. Carefully and skillfully, Charles draws in the traditional design. The paper folded in two so that the imprint, the mirror image, can be traced in. Later, the saw will faithfully follow the graceful lines of the master copy. But before that, it must be laid on and glued firmly to the veneer sandwich. Charles rubs beeswax onto the swarf or backing piece and smooths it with the hot iron. That backing piece is of walnut cut with the grain at right angles or opposite to the veneer above. The beeswax lubricates the saw. The keeping of bees, as we shall see, is an important part of the Robinson household. The islands in the plan are pierced to allow the fret saw blade to enter. Jobs were hard to get in the 1950s. Once the brothers felt good if they could see themselves employed for three weeks ahead. Now they have a two-year waiting list. Michael carefully applies glue to the dovetail joint of one of the legs which will form the tripod and help support the table. <laughs> 